Hello everybody and welcome to our first week team builder for WCSL Season 3, uh, No Max No Legends Draft League. I am super excited for this season. If you don't know what these team builder videos are, uh, what I do in them is basically I look at my opponent's team, uh, I go over what kind of sets I think they might be bringing, what, kind, what Pokemon they're more or less likely to bring into my team. Uh, and kind of their strategies and game plans, or what I perceive to be their strategies and game plans. And then, moving after that, I go on to discuss my team, what I've built for the week, what I'm planning on bringing. Uh, all of the teams that I have here will be essentially what I build in-game, unless I say otherwise in the battle video. And the basic plan is I will release this team builder video on Monday, and I will release a subsequent battle video on Tuesday, and that's just because of the schedule of the league, where the battles have to be done by Monday of the week. Uh, and so by releasing my team builder on Monday, uh, I am not putting any pressure on when I have to get the battle done by, essentially. Uh, but I will be recording these team builders before every match, uh, and not after every match, because that would kind of take away from the genu the genuine nature of this where I don't know what my opponent is actually going to bring, what sets they might actually have, and I think it's interesting to compare these thoughts now to what I actually will see. Like, do I, do I get my predictions right? Do I, am I completely off? Do I just miss everything? It's, it's hard to tell uh, what's going to happen, and we're just going to have to see that. So, with that in mind, here is what I've kind of looked at for my opponent's team what I, for this first week. Uh, our week one opponent is Hermit's Crabs, uh, uh, piloted by, of course, Hermit. Uh, and let's just uh, take a look at what Pokemon I think they have that are strong. So, first things first, their draft they have in their S tier, Indie Female. Indeedee is a super uh, good redirector, it's got really good support capabilities, and with Psychic Surge uh, and Expanding Force, it can actually deal quite a bit of damage if it's offensively oriented. Now, it usually isn't, it's more of a support mod again, but it can be offensively oriented. Uh, this week I've got it pegged, it's probably going to be Psychic Surge, it normally will be, but especially considering this team. Uh, and kind of, uh, if we take a brief overview of the team, you'll notice that it doesn't have many fast mods. In fact, it's fastest, the fastest Pokemon on this team, I believe, is Malamar at base 73 speed. So, well, not really. It's, it's technically indeed at base 85 speed, but there is really nothing fast on this team that is going to be heavily offensive. So it's a very Trick Room-oriented team. It wants Trick Room up in almost every match it's going to be in, and it's got some very strong Trick Room picks. So Indeedee is going to be a very good support Pokémon to allow that Trick Room to get up. Uh, so going with that, I think this week it's most likely that Indeedee is going to have the Culverberry item. The reason for this is because I have a very strong Dark type in Weavile, and I have other Pokémon with strong Dark type coverage. Uh, and I am uh, just really, it, it's going to be hit super effective on the, with dark type attacks, so it might run a Culverberry just so it doesn't die in one hit. Uh, it could also run the Focus Sash, but I have a suspicion that the Focus Sash is going to be somewhere else, which is why I've given the Culverberry to Indeed. Uh, it's really interesting to try to figure out what set this has. I'm 90% certain, though, that and Pokemon Showdown is apparently restarting the server soon, so we'll have to... Lovely! Okay, we're just going to work offline. Uh, we're doing it live. Uh, I'm 90% I'm certain about what this set is going to be, at least three of the moves. It's definitely going to have Follow Me. It's probably going to have Helping Hand. It's usually going to have Expanding Force. Protect could be something else. It could be Dazzling Gleam. It could be Mystical Fire. Uh, 
I could even technically have those over Helping Hand instead of Protect, but really it's just a Pokemon that has options with what it can run, but it's mostly going to be running this kind of follow me support set. I'm expecting it to be max HP, max defense with a plus defense nature, such as relaxed. Uh, although it could obviously be bold and be running 31 speed IV. Uh, that's something I have to take into consideration in case it wants to be doing something out of Trick Room, just in case. But yeah, in DDF is going to be that strong supporter that I have to kind of try to get rid of to get through to the rest of the Pokemon. Or do I? Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but moving on, we have Snorlax. Snorlax I'm expecting to be running some sort of a belly drum set. Now, belly drum figgy berry is a kind of a thing. Belly drum and a pinch berry, very common kind of a set. Just get back to it, you're like 83% health with your gluttony and be doing uh, considerable damage. It could also just be belly drum with a citrus berry and have thick fat, for example. Uh, and something else that I have been uh, kind of keeping in the back of my head uh, as a possible set for Snorlax, it, it could be belly drum with a salak berry and try to self-destruct on. Uh, and that is something that I need to consider when looking at this Pokemon from a team building perspective. Uh, because if this thing wants to go boom, it can go boom. And I have to be aware of that. Uh, Belly Drum, I, I think, is kind of necessary to get offense against my team. I have a lot of steel types, so high horsepower is almost certainly coming. If it's not, I'm expecting some sort of a fighting type move, Brick Break. I don't think it gets Drain Punch, but it could go for Fire Punch. Focus Punch is almost certainly not coming because of various reasons that I'm going to mention, but it has a lot of different options uh, for moves to use, but I think its best option probably is High Horsepower. Body Slam is always good, Strong Stab, and Darkest Lariat is just always a decent move to hit uh, various Pokemon. Uh, although maybe not as useful against my team in particular, uh, dark type moves will still hit uh, a lot of things for neutral damage on my team. Moving on from there, our next, uh, the other, the next A tier that they drafted was Conkeldur. Uh, Conkeldur, I'm expecting, it could run a Flame Orb Gut set, it could also run a Life Orb Iron Fist set, uh, or even a Sheer Force set, uh, although that's the least likely option, I believe. Uh, it's probably going to be running a Protect move, Close Combat, it's just uh, Close Combat and Drain Punch, it's kind of probably going to be running standard Conkeldur stuff, especially with Ndidi on... The thing is, with Ndidi and Psychic Terrain, uh, I don't think it's going to be running Mock Punch, uh, which is definitely something that I'm keeping in mind. Because if that Psychic Terrain goes down, and I do think I will get it down, then uh, it will be very useful to have that kind of thought in my head that it's not likely that Conkeldur will have Mock Punch on this particular team with Psychic Terrain. Uh, but yeah. I'm expecting double fighting stab. It hits everything on my team. I have two resists in Aromatisse and in Clefairy, but uh, that is uh, those are going to be trying to take those hits. But I have like six fighting weaknesses other than that. So fighting stab is really good into my team. Close combat, drain punch, almost a given. Rock Slide I've got here because it's a gut set. It could also run something like Fire Punch or Ice Punch. Uh, uh, just because it is, if, if it wants to run a Life Orb Iron Fist set. I'm expecting like max HT, HP, max attack, a kind of standard set. Maybe it runs a bit bulkier. It could even run a Salt Vest uh, if it wants to take some hits better. But uh, I don't expect necessarily that it will be. If it is, I do have contingencies, but I, it'll also be a lot less strong if it's any Assault Vest set than it 
it, than if it is this Flame Orb Guts set or uh, a Life Orb Sheer Force or Iron Fist set. Next, we have Reuniclus. Uh, there's a lot of different options for Reuniclus. I've used Solosis in JTDL, as you all saw. I used it very offensively. It can also just be a defensive trick room setter. But normally, Reuniclus wants to be running uh, as more of a sweeper, because its defensive stats aren't exactly the greatest, although it does have good HP. Uh, it's going to almost certainly be running Trick Room. There are a bunch of Trick Room setters on this team. Uh, Energy Ball is kind of its coverage move. It could also be running like Thunder. I think it gets. It doesn't get Thunderbolt is the thing. So like if it wants to run Thunder move, it's literally Thunder. Could run Shadow Ball, but that stab isn't good into my team. Uh, so kind of Energy Ball or Shadow Ball are the two other options than Expanding Force here. Again, Expanding Force, because we have Psychic Surgeon DD on the team, is the most likely Psychic Stab for any Psychic type mod on this team, and there are three of them. Uh, I've put Recover on here as an option. Uh, it could also be running Protect, it could also be running Calm Mind, it could be running Flash Cannon. Flash Cannon is decent stab, not into my team, but just in general. Or not stab, but coverage. Uh, it could run knockoff. I think it still gets that in this gen. Although showdown is weird and it'll show things. Uh, it could run weird sets, but I think it's most likely to run an offensive set on this team. Uh, just because this team is very offensively oriented in Trick Room. Uh, and a lot less defensively oriented. It could also run a Cobra Berry. The thing is, it doesn't match up very well into Weavile no matter what, because it doesn't get... Like, it... It gets Flash Cannon, but it doesn't get, like, Dazzling Gleam or Moon Blast or any other Fairy-type moves that some uh, Psychic types do. So, just not as many options uh, for it. Moving on, next we have Hatterene. Another B tier, another psychic type, another trick room setting. Uh, I expect the Hatterene to have the focus sash on this team, and the the reason for that is because of Duraludon, which I have on my team. But that is that is another story for another time. Uh, trick room, Dazzling Gleam, Expanding Force, Mystical Fire. I I don't think this thing is going to be running Protect this week. Uh, it's speed tying with my slowest mod, so uh, I mean it's just most likely going to just be running three attacks trick room. Uh, I don't see why else it would do anything. The other option that it has than running something like Mystical Fire for a coverage move, which Mystical Fire hits a lot of my mods, which because I have a lot of steel types on my team, that's why I put it there. Uh, the reason I have Mystical Fire there is that, but anyways, uh, if it doesn't want to run Mystical Fire, something it can do that might mess me up is running run in prison on the Hatterene. And the thing that that messes up is it doesn't allow me to reverse Trick Room immediately if Hatterene is still on the field. Because uh, I would have to get rid of the Hatterene before I could get rid of the Trick Room because it would be imprisoning my reversal of the Trick Room in that case. Uh, I'm expecting something that could be max HP for defense uh, and max special attack. I've also calced for max defense for HP. This is a set that I have calced against uh, and the calcs kind of work very similarly in both directions. Uh, so when I mention calcs Note that I'm mentioning for the worst of the two calc, which is going to be the 252 defense for HP calc, uh, is what I ran most of my stuff against. Uh, but this is the kind of set that I'm expecting with a focus sash with magic bounce because I have a lot of taunt on my team. Uh, I'm not expecting something like healer. Uh, anticipation is like 
going to be completely useless for this Hatterene because everything on my team gets uh, uh, steel stab or coverage, steel coverage on literally every mon, so it's a useless ability for it. Next we have Cathagragus. Uh This is the other potential Culberberry holder. Although I really don't think it's coming this week, it doesn't have a strong matchup into my dark types, it doesn't have uh, the greatest moves, it doesn't have the best stats. Like it's It's got a good defensive stat, and it could iron defense body press on me, but it's not something I've prepped extensively for, mostly because I just think that this team has better offensive options into me than an iron defense body press Crafagrigus that doesn't get set up right away and it can just get chipped down by all my mods. And even with like a max defense stat and max HP, it's still getting like two shot by some of my Pokemon because uh, I just have a lot of strong attackers. And I have a Dracovish, that too, is something to keep in mind. Uh, so it can run Sh Shadow Wall, it can run Defense Body Press, it can run Special Sets with Calm Mind. It could be Destiny Bond, something to always note. Haze is a possibility. It could be a nasty plot set. I'm really not expecting too much from this, if it comes at all, because Honestly, it's just a horrible matchup into Weavile and into Scrafty. Uh, and both of those are really powerful Pokemon on my team into it, and into this entire team, really. So I don't think that Kofagrigus comes in general. On to the next tier, it's uh, the next C tier, that is to say, where we have Malamar. I'm expecting, if it comes, uh, that it has a choice band set, so it just has more damage output. It could also be an expert belt set. Uh, but really, I don't see what it would be expert belt for. Just normal Malamar stuff I'm expecting from it. Superpower with contrary. Things like Night Slash, Rock Slide, Psycho Cut for coverage moves. Uh, really, Superpower is all it wants into my team because I have six fighting weaknesses, but again I have two fairy types that do quite well into Malamar, and I do have a uh, bug type in Froth Moth, Frost Moth, and I have bug type coverage in U-Turn on Berserker, and I have other bug type coverage on various Pokemon, I think Weavile gets X-Scissor still, so uh, that it's just not the greatest matchup into my team, Malamar. Again, it might come just because of contrary superpower factor, but again, not the likeliest thing I've seen. Uh, moving on, Oranguru. Uh, this could be an inner focus set. It could also be a telepathy set, is the idea here. I think actually telepathy is probably just a bit more likely because of the idea that uh, Indeed, he should be blocking any uh, fake outs, anyways. So, telepathy is going to be more useful for the team. That being said, it could be a weird symbiosis set with like some psychic seed mom. You don't know with the team. But, mental herb because of taunt, uh, essentially, and because of potential encore. I have a couple of mods with support moves that could do that. Trick Room, Instruct. That Instruct is the big one to look out for if it instructs a Belly Drum Snorlax, for example, into using a strong move again. If it instructs a Crawdon to use a strong move again. A Cockledor to go for a couple of close combats in a row. Uh, things can get dicey. Uh, so Oranguru is something that I want to make sure I can really stop as soon as possible. It's another potential Culverberry holder, uh, but I don't think uh, it's as likely to hold it as Ndidi because it's just not as likely to come as Ndidi. That said, I'm, I'm not expecting this not to come. I am prepared for Aranguru with my team, uh, and I think it's going to be really exciting stuff. Uh, Expanding forth with Thunderbolt are there because it needs other moves than Trick Room and Instruct, and I don't think it wants to run Protect ever because it's not worth protecting most of the time. Uh, so it's a fourth 
trick room option, I suppose. But yeah. Steelix can curse. It can have worse power than Rock Slide and Iron Head. It's it's good coverage into my team to have just a ground type because I have four or five ground weaknesses depending on how you count. Uh, because Weavile is weak to everything. Iron Head is just a good strong move. Sheer Force is a great ability for him. It could also hold the life orb. It could be sturdy as well, or Rock Head uh, with like Rock Head Smash, but I don't think those are as likely. I'm expecting something like Max HP, Max Attack again, just because it's strong and it's in Trick Room. I don't know what else to say. Crawdont. Crawdont is a bit of a wild card. It's in that base 55 speed tier that you never know what it's going to do. Except that on this on this team you're more inclined to think that it's going to be used in Trick Room, but you never know again. Aqua Jet is a possibility. This is another contender for a mod that I think will potentially be brought this week against me. Just because if it if my opponent wants to try to throw me for a loop. Uh, Crawdont is always something that I'm going to have to look out for. That said, I did notice that I, I did note that I was looking out for this in the draft review video, so check that out. That's going to be linked in the description, by the way, uh, where I review everybody's draft uh, the day after, essentially. Uh, Oren Guru wasn't on this team. It was Butterfree, and that was interesting. Uh, but Aqua Jet is just strong with I'm expecting choice band adaptability. There's no real other set for a Crawdon. Like you, you want power out of this thing, and with base 120 attack adaptability, choice band, it's strong. Aqua Jet, Crab Hammer, close combat, knockoff kind of a thing is a fairly standard set in singles. It would work in doubles as well. Uh, the thing just doesn't have a great speed tier, but in draft, everything has a great speed tier, so you never know. It could also be running some kind of a weird Iron Ball set if it wants to be slow enough to really take maximum advantage of Trick Room to underspeed things like Aromatisse because at at a base 27, at a zero speed minus speed with an Iron Ball that hits 27 stat, three slower than Aromatisse. Uh, so if it wants to take advantage of that, it can use that. It also gets Dragon Dance for some reason. I don't understand it. Uh, it might get Swords Dance as well. I haven't looked it. Yeah, it does. So, Iron Ball set with Swords Dance is another thing. But, you know, it, it's something to look out for. Not something to necessarily be too wary of, but something to be aware of nonetheless. And finally, we have Palisand. If it comes, it might be Pashaberry. I don't think it's coming because I have a Dracovish and it's just not a good matchup into Dracovish to bring a ground type just in general. That's the same reason I don't think Steelix is coming, although with Steelix's defense stat, it's actually viable to live a hit with a Pasho Berry. Even with a Pasho Berry, Palosan does not live a choice band Fisher Surround. <laughs> I, I don't think this thing is coming, but if it does... If these are the moves that it gets. Yeah, Iron Defense if it wants to be Iron Defense Shore Up. Doesn't even get Body Press though. It's a special attacker. I just figured I'd mention it because it's something that you might see in the battle video that I'm putting up the day after this one goes up. If it comes, it'll probably be Max, max HP, Max Special Attack with the Quiet Nature, I don't know. This team, uh, against my team, this mod doesn't just, just doesn't look like it's coming in general. Uh, so that is my first opponent's team. Uh, uh, so what do I expect to be facing up against? I think Ndidi, Snorlax, Conkler are musts. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain Hatterene is coming too. Then Reuniclus is a possibility, but I think Oranguru is the most likely for the fifth as a secondary trick room setter, uh, just because it's not weak to steel types. Uh, and finally, uh, I, I, it's really a toss-up between the rest of them. Crawdot could be there. 
Malamar could be there. Reuniclus could be there. Although I think that's actually a decent. I have, there are plenty of decent reasons to leave your second B tier against my team. Uh, in any case, uh, knowing what I'm expecting to see now, let us show my team for this week. And we're starting off with Cool Cat. Now, this is the one of the most fun sets I have ever built. Uh, uh, and I say that because it took a lot of effort. I put a lot of effort into making sure that this Weavile can do what it needs to do. It looks like you, it's just, oh, it's a 252-252 four set. Uh, it's just got a boosting item. It's got four moves. Uh, Sure, what's the big deal? The big deal is beat up. Because beat up is a really, really interesting move. Beat up, dark type move, uses the attack stat of each of your Pokemon as that, as the hit. So like, for example, when it's calculating the base power of the hit from beat up, each hit has a different base power based on the base attack stat of uh, each of the each of the other Pokemon that you've brought to the battle. So, for example, uh, let's the base the formula is it's five the base power is five plus one tenth of the base attack stat of each Pokemon. So, for example, with Aromatis. If I use Aromatis and one of the hits is from Aromatis, that hit will be 5 plus 1 tenth of 72, or 5 plus 7 is 12 base power for that hit. So it's really interesting what this means in terms of what Weavile does. Because now all of a sudden Weavile is hitting four times, each time is a different base power, and it's hard to calculate. And one of the things that, that I was looking at in testing this week is what order the hits occur in. And when you use beat up specifically in double battles, to do this I had this whole thing. I was in Discord talking it talking it out with several people. I had I, I was asking questions that people weren't answering, uh, maybe because they didn't know, maybe because they didn't care. Uh, maybe because it's common knowledge and I just wasn't finding it in the right places. What I learned is when you use when you use beat up in a double battle or in presumably any battle, the order of the hits as calculated for damage is the order of the party. Like the order of the Pokemon in the party determines the order in which the base attack stats are used to calculate each hit of beat up. So, for example, if I were to lead Weavile plus Aromatisse, Weavile in the first position, Aromatisse in the second position, and I use Beat Up up there, then Weavile's, and then I have like two Pokemon in the back, say, for example, I have Dracovish and Berserker in that order, and my four are Weavile, Aromatisse, uh, Dracovish, Berserker, then the order of the attack, the hits, from beat up is going to be Weavile's attack stat, then Aromatisse's, then Dracovish's, then Preserver's. However, if I were to lead with Aromatisse first and Weavile second, then that changes the order of beta hits. Even though Weavile is still using it, it calculates with Aromatisse's attack stat first, then Weavile's then Dracovish's, then Preserver's. Again, the order in the back is staying the same, but switching, which is on the left and right in the front, actually changes the order in which the beat-up hits go off. And that is important because of what I was expecting from here with a Culverberry Indeedy. Because if I if I am going to use beat-up into an Indeedy to take it out, it's because I expect it to be either Sash or Culverberry. If it's Culverberry, then I can't take it out in one hit with something else because I just don't have a strong enough hit, even with Choice Band, even with Max Attack, even with Helping Hand. Uh, 
no matter what I do, I just can't take it out if it's Culver Berry because it's Culver Berry. It's taking half of the damage it would otherwise. If it's Focus Sash, I'm not taking out it in one head anyways because it has Focus Sash. So, uh, Beat Up kind of gets around both. But for Beat Up to be doing enough damage, you have to take every little thing into account like that. So if I'm if the first hit's damage is going to be reduced on Beat Up, then I want to make sure that the, le the least damage hit is the one that's being not boosted. Like, Weavile... Uh, like, I don't want Weavile going first because Weavile has a base 120 attack stat. If I want, if one of the hits is going first, I want it to be with the lowest attack mon, which is going to be Aromatisse. So, if I'm going to be leading uh, with Weavile and Aromatisse, I want to lead them with Aromatisse first, so that its hit is calculated first for the beat-up damage. And what I've calculated, based on my four-dimensional calculator that is free for you to use if you make a copy of it four-dimensional move range calculator crazy stuff i've been working on in the past few days uh i'm going to double check my dms with my partner right now because it has all the stats but with a certain team composition i will have something like a barely 50 percent hit barely 50 percent to ko with beat up if it's Aromatisse uh, plus Weavile, with another team composition in the back, it's 84.24%. With a third team composition, it can increase to like 97.75%. I can guarantee it with one very specific exact team composition that I'm not even certain I'm going to bring to any given game. But like this is the kind of calculations that I'm doing. Do I and it matters be, because this is only if Aromatisse is the one that's hitting first. Because if Weavile is hitting first, all of the the damage from Weavile's hit is halved, and that's more damage being halved than Aromatisse's hit being halved. I'm I'm certain that I've lost half of you at this point. I've lost myself basically twice now. The point is. I had very specific stuff set up to make sure that I get a KO like 84% of the time at bare minimum with the team loadout that I'm expecting to use. <laughs> Funny stuff like that. Uh, and that's just with beat up. And that's just one move. So that shows you kind of how deep I am thinking when I'm going into my rabbit hole of preparation. I really am taking everything into account and what I'm putting in these videos, I'm not going to go over this kind of calculation thing with every single Pokemon and every single move on that Pokemon. This is what I'm spending my free time doing. I, I could be writing more of my paper that I need to finish. Instead, I am spending some of that time, not all of that time, I'm still finishing the paper. Hi, Mom and Dad. Uh, I'm spending some of that time doing these wild calculations for every single move on every single Pokemon. Just to see if it survives things, to see if it KOs things. And it's neat stuff. It's really fun. You all should try it. It'll help your draft prep. Moving on, we have Taunt, uh, so we can Taunt the Andy in other scenarios where we don't want to KO it, because there are scenarios that I've thought of uh, based on what is brought and what I know about the team, where I want to KO the Andy turn one and let Trick Room go up, where I don't want to KO the Andy turn one and I want to Taunt it instead uh, and keep Trick Room and let Trick Room go up and just go from there. All sorts of plans, all sorts of plans. Then I have Snarl as an option. Uh, Snarl is always uh, a fun one. It's just basically I want to lower their special attack because so many of the opposing team is special attackers. So many of them are psychic types. Uh, and it's just really nice to be able to Snarl and bring the special attack of a Hatterene and an Indeedee or an Oranguru or anything down, a Reuniclus. 
And it also ignores redirection because it's a spread move, so it can damage a Hatterene even if there's a follow me on. And of course protect. On the, on the subject of ignoring redirection, of course, we have Duraladon. Uh, shout outs to my Boy Scout troop for having the incredible meme of just shouting buildings in all caps with three exclamation points because that is our Duraladon's nickname this week. Assault Vest Stalwart set, your kind of standard VGC thing. It's going to ignore redirection and it's going to be bulkier on the special side than it would be otherwise with a base 50 special defense stat. Wonderful stuff. Steel Roller, super important move this week. Steel Roller, and this is the reason why we're running quiet with 20 investment in speed, by the way, is Steel Roller. Uh, Steel Roller is basically going to be our out to get, it's our get out of psychic terrain free card, essentially, <laughs> as it were. Uh, get out of psychic terrain free. Uh, it just destroys the terrain. It's nothing more to be said. Like, you have Psychic Terrain? Sorry, but you don't. Uh, goodbye. Uh, and also, this is part of that, this is part of a different counter that I have where it's KOing a Hatterene with a Sash uh, a decent portion of the time in conjunction with uh, Snarls uh, and other spread moves like Rock Slide from Dracovish. It's always KOing if it hits everything. Uh, flash Cannon is of course strong special type move. Just does a lot of damage. Really good. Uh, always nice, especially with uh, Steely Spirit Berserker, which we are bringing, of course. Snarl again. Same reason we have it on Weavile. Just so it can do damage and at the same time lower the special attack stat of the opposing uh, special attackers. Dragon Tail, very vital. Normally against Trick Room teams, you only need Dragon Tail to prevent Trick Room on this thing. Uh, but against Hatterene, uh, Dragon Tail, of course, will not work. So you have to resort to other methods, like just KOing it. And even if it has a Sash kind of thing. Uh, all sorts of stuff like that. I've just realized that it could be Babiri Berry as well, but I have plans for that as well. Uh, regardless. Next we have our Rascal Cat. Our rascally little cat. Again, we have Fake Out. And Fake Out is because we're going to be having Steel Roller on this and on this, for the record. So we can take out the Psychic Terrain and then switch it through the and Fake Something Out. Which is going to be really helpful in a no Dynamax format, just having that fake out pressure on the field. I don't have it on Weavile just because I'm more likely going to be leading with Weavile than bringing it in the back ever. Uh, Iron Head is just super strong with Steely Spirit. I've got a Focus Sash this week because fighting types and ground type coverage and all that sort of stuff. It's not going to be surviving a hit if it's not carrying the Focus Sash a good portion of the time. Uh, Iron Head is good, U-Turn is good, Pivoting, especially with the Fake Out. And of course Protect because of, again, Protect is because of the Conkledur and because of the Snorlax in case they're sets that I need to be really afraid of. Also I didn't, I didn't mention my EV spreads. This team has no speed that I'm going up against. It has, it's again, its fastest mod is the Indeed. So if I am looking to beat the team, I am going to want to invest more in bulk than I do in speed. I don't need a max speed Weavile to route speed in Indeed. It doesn't need any speed investment. And in fact, I'm using a minus speed nature because I can snarl and do a little bit more damage with the snarl if I'm not a, a a minus special attack nature. <laughs> it's not much, but it matters at every level. And I'm still out speeding at 130 speed stat, literally everything on that team by 1.5 times. So, <laughs> Duraludon, I have to, I can't be minus attack with Steel Roller and still be KOing Hatterene on good rolls. Uh, so, 
As a result, instead, I am running a minus speed nature, but to ensure that I outspeed Malamar if it's no speed investment neutral nature, I think that's what this was for. I am still 31 IV and I am have 20 minus investment, which is just hilarious. I don't want to be minus defensive, especially my special defense with this Pokemon. So that kind of stuff is really mattering in the end. Uh, and Berserker, it's just, it's not, it's no speed investment. I don't really care about it being outsped or undersped by other things. It's going to outspeed everything on the team if, it, if the team wants to run kind of full trick room mode-esque thing. Uh, and it's just max attack, max special defense because the special attackers can take it out if it's not max special attack. And I really want it to be mostly walling those if it can. Next, uh, let's get to the elephant in the room. <laughs> uh, we have our Shield Force Life Orb Copper Raja. Uh, you saw me use Q Phantom JTDL. If you didn't, what are you doing? Watch those videos uh, and hit a like and subscribe and cringe YouTube stuff, you know. Uh, we're using our kind of standard Copper Raja set. Uh, protect Iron Head player off plus one. Our plus one this week is Steel Roller for the aforementioned region reasons. Uh, it's strong move, hits hard, you know, the, the deal. Uh, uh, Iron Head even stronger with Berserker. I couldn't use Berserker in uh, Little Cut because it's not a Little Cut mod and Galo Meowth doesn't get Steely Spirit, but Sheer Forth Life Orb, Steely Spirit, Stab Boosted, Iron Head does damage from a Max Attack Copper Raja. Uh, I've got a uh, slidey bars kind of thing going on here. I have calc for this. It does live expanding forces, etc. in single target in terrain. That kind of stuff. Not that it's going to need to because of various things. I'm running with a 31 speed IV and adamant nature because it's not going to be under speeding Hatterene anyways and I don't plan on letting it get trick room up regardless or keep Trick Room up, and that is what Aromatisse is for. Aromatisse is my Trick Room contingency plan. If something goes wrong and Trick Room goes up, Aromatisse is going to be there to say no, essentially. It's just there to reverse Trick Room, and it's also there to be super, super annoying with After You. After You, of course, means that it lets the Pokemon that you target go immediately after Aromatisse, and Aromatisse is base 29. And this week we're holding the Iron Ball because it speed ties Hatterene. <laughs> and speed tying Hatterene is not good enough. Uh, uh, and we want to be slower than anything with all of our mods anyways. So After You is going to be a perfect way to do that. Uh, Trick Room is important. Helping Hand is important for a lot of counts. Trick Room we're going to be reversing most of the time. Moonblast, specifically from 220 plus, this is the reason for our investment in special effect, special attack. This is the best roll we can get while still being reasonably bulky. Uh, it's a 75% roll to one hit KO a max HP for special defense. Uh, punchy dude. What's its name? What's your name? Conkelder. Conkelder. 75% chance to one hit KO that with a Moonblast. Uh, I, I think that's good enough for being the best I can be without sacrificing some special events. And I really don't want to sacrifice special events against this team. Aromatisse is just bulky enough, I think, without investment this week. Many weeks that will not be the case. It'll usually not be running this kind of special attack, but cop, but Conkelder is something that I had to worry about quite a bit in prep. And this was my best option, really. Other than, of course, the the play rough with Life Orb Sheer Force was boost from uh, Caparaja after and after you, or even not after and after you if it's under speeding for some reason. Uh, and finally, of course, we have Dracovish. It's Mr. Fish. Uh, what can you say? 
Uh, I've given it a wave incense because I want to be unique this week. Uh, wave incense does exactly the same thing as mystic water, does exactly the same thing as sea incense, but less people are as likely to know wave incense, so I'll explain it anyways. It just gives you a 1.2 times boost to your water type moves, which are going to be Fish's Rend. And Fish's Rend is really all we ever need to click, assuming that we can prevent Trick Room, which we should be able to do with this lineup. Uh, yeah. Uh, all that being said, uh, it also has Crunch, in case we want to do damage like that. It has Rock Slide for spread damage, and this is important in case uh, something goes wrong and we need to hit a Rock Slide to flinch something. Uh, it's very important. And of course we have Protect. I've done a lot of calcs and I've determined that we don't need a Choice Band on Dracovish this week, and so Fish's Rend with Wave Incense is just going to be doing enough to KO a lot of things. Uh, and as such I can afford to run a Protect on it. Maybe help stall out Trick Room. Maybe protect against Custap, Self Destruct, Snorlax. You never know. Anything can happen. But all that being said, what uh, what is my plan? Uh, I have a couple things in mind, although I'm still going to be going over some things, hopefully, with my prep partner, uh, who I'm going to be keeping anonymous. Uh, I'm still going to be going over some of that stuff later today before the match. Uh, the basic plan is uh, game one, I want to lead uh, probably Duraludon and Dracovish or Weavile and Duraludon. I'm definitely leading Duraludon game one. Uh, I want to see what they're doing and I want to judge how their trick room how well they are, how well equipped they are to get their trick room up. Are they going to have the very, very head? Essentially, is half of the battle. Because if they don't bring the very, very hattery, they can never get trick room up ever. Uh, and so the idea is to lead those, and really just go from there. See what happens. Uh, Hope that things go well, really. Uh, game two, assuming it works, I'm probably going to actually still switch uh, to Aromatisse plus Revile game two. If it doesn't work, I'm definitely doing so uh, because Aromatisse threatens to not only immediately, uh, not only immediately threatens to reverse Trick Room, but threatens to reverse Trick Room the turn after. It threatens to keep you in Trick Room and use after you with the Iron Ball. And that is all very scary stuff for the opponents. Uh, and I am just really hoping that everything works out. And if we need to go to a Game 3, I don't know. Anything is on the table. Uh, we'll see what my mindset is going into it. But until then, thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you in the video tomorrow that I put up, uh, for you tomorrow, for me also tomorrow, uh, because it, but it's two days apart for, the t for you, you all understand, you all understand. You don't, you may not understand, but you understand. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm putting up the battle video. I hope you all enjoy that. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed this, and I will be posting another Team Builder video in the next week, or maybe even something special before then. Uh, you've been warned. Uh, until then, uh, stay safe, everybody, and I will see you soon. Bye!